Hello everybody, um, this is a very important topic again. Um, I just looked at Southeast Asia, Oceania area, um, and I was going to look uh, really carefully at the, uh, essentially the Nigerian uh, River Delta right in here, and then I just realized we really need to just really get into the details of the Congo jungle, uh, particularly the Great Lakes of Africa and the water situation there because that's actually, uh, you know, the major wildlife zones here. And you can see out here, there's this little uh, portion here. I heard some very terrible news uh, about some uh, really difficult problems out here uh, with basically uh, what's going on. So. Uh, but basically you can see that there's a very it, it's not at all what you might think uh, the jungle looks like right so if you look at the map here with the weather on it uh, you know you can kind of zoom in here and see and here's the jungle here on another map uh, and yet another map here and another map here so kind of can start to see some of the population as well as farming uh, and it's actually very significant so uh, what we're about to do is really uh, look at all the details and I definitely want this to be way more interesting than how I'm talking about it. I had so much fun, uh, you know, trying to look at it with different people that had really different ideas uh, beyond the logical uh, facts uh, looking at spiritual truth. So, uh as you look at this, you know, I'm just trying to be very cautious. Uh, you know, one of the lessons that I learned uh, in science is you just never make a mistake. And the actual truth is in spirituality, you don't ever want to make a mistake. Even there, even more serious of a consequence uh, potentially. So uh, when I talk about this, I'm kind of talking about it from the scientific point of view. But actually... Uh, privately and other details I'm definitely gonna look at the spiritual side but there's so many different perspectives and actually I'm not an African as you can see I put on a funny hat just to remind everybody that I'm definitely not African and I really care a lot about what locals think about the water here and ultimately it is Africa's and the and ultimately ultimately the wildlife and and spirituality of our planet to try to think about what to do here and the reason we're doing this is essentially we want no headaches if you have even a tiny speck a little little tiny speck of dirt or anything in your water it could actually really be bad for you so and this happens for all of the animals on the planet right and so my vision as i was laying in bed last night i was thinking about this man if I were to go into the jungle, I'd like to just scoop water out of the river and drink it right there anywhere in the Congo. And that's my kind of the vision here is to like look at what we can do to make that possible. You know, at one time in, in the United States history, European history, every history of our planet, we were able to do that. We could drink directly from the stream. There's no reason in modern society why we can't still make that possible. So that's where we're going with this discussion. We want to clean up the water so good that we can essentially drink directly from the lakes. And they do that. There's I've seen videos of people in Lake Victoria where the Africans from Kampala, they don't even drink from the wells. They just go directly to the water. They walk a few feet out into the water, fill a water bottle, and that's what they drink and that's the case for many places in Africa however there's still the pollution problem right so clearly we all want very clean water and anything we can do to help each other have really clean water is awesome so we're gonna try to look at those details here so that man I you know my brother when he goes uh, rock climbing or deep into the hills they bring a water filter and they just drink directly out of the stream because there's no if you go backpacking and you go deep into the wilderness there's not a water fountain anywhere and you actually have to have a water filter of some sort so 
but actually it's nice to drink directly from the stream so and uh, that's the goal here so here you can see all the rivers of basically what's going on in the Congo as well as the population so right away we can start to see there's definitely some population down in here so a lot of that water pollution is actually bypassed from the main part of the jungle right so fortunately this river here is very vital however there's a lake right in here that's deep in the jungle so what you're not seeing is that this lake actually is very very vital so the people are all living down in here right and then there's a couple pockets you can see the deforestation here this does not show how bad it is at all but you can see there's just tons of population all in here so if you if you're using the bathroom several times a day that is dumped into the ground and that eventually gets into the water system for sure so that all needs to be carefully thought about and you can see there's a major city right here and there's definitely all of this right on, on the back door and i didn't even show how bad it is i'm going to pause this to show you one other image so i'm really sorry to do this but this is the farming map so you can see that there's definitely big chunks of farming and heavy farming right here in the back side of the jungle so if i pull this off it's hard to see it but there's definitely that and there's also the human population right in there as well so it's just hard to see uh the actual map here on top of that so uh but i want to make it very clear that these lakes are very important so we basically want to see how we can uh, essentially tackle that problem of the clean water so again, before we look at that, the details here, you have to understand that the jungle, while it is heavily forested, has different types of climate. And it's actually important to not just the red area, because this is one type of climate. There's actually many climates along the Great Lakes here. So actually, there's a lot of bigger animals. A lot of the big animals don't live directly in the jungle. There is a big monkey populations all around here but all the diversity actually happens not only because of the temperature but also because of the variation in climate you can see that there's just a huge variation on this side like in europe you don't even have any of that right and you have the desert right in here so you have desert and then you have forest and then you have jungle right in here and this is basically a major city uh, and then right in here which we're essentially not going to talk about too much but there's actually a sliver here and this is actually a very important habitat in madagascar so anyway i wish we could make this anyway so what is the point here that we're trying to see right so basically the rivers so let me pause this and we'll go into the details so this is a really tough conversation um unfortunately uh you know this is this is information that we definitely need to learn about and uh you know in, in terms of the wildlife here and in terms of water and in terms of spirituality of so many very important aspects here because essentially africa is the largest major landmass, uh with the possible exception of asia and europe uh and basically it lies right on the equator here um it's just uh massive so basically uh the jungle here uh including the amazon uh is vital so we're basically looking at half of the picture here for wildlife and for life on our planet uh for the most part so uh And I wanted to show the geological map because a lot of people look at, say, the satellite map or they might look at the climate map or they might look at the river map or even a population map. But essentially, the geology map is extremely important. Uh, and you can see all the really important details here. And this is only one. The geology actually will change as you go deeper into the earth. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind um, that this map actually varies a lot compared, compared, com depending on what, who the geologist is that you talk with. And you can see all these little fault lines as well. So a lot of that is very debatable. Um, 
some people even argue that Africa is splitting in half, that this whole entire section is becoming essentially separate from Africa. So all of East Africa may not even be part of Africa, according to some geologists. So that's a very big steer. You can see that this fault line pulls in through here, goes down, <clears throat> and you can see the lakes basically through here that there is perhaps a whole huge separation there um, that may take place. So that's a huge question about the future of our planet Earth. Uh, as far as I'm aware, that's one of the biggest land changes on our planet. Uh, and if you think about it, that's quite much more significant than the Himalayan Mountains. That's a huge movement. Uh, so, uh, and potentially really affecting the jungle, uh, you know, and actually opening up, even making these lakes even larger here. So. Now, from the recent history, perhaps Southeast Asia, which we already looked at, uh, has a lot more volcanic activity. Um, so it is, there is a lot of questions about what is happening in general. So right away uh, from these maps, you can see that this city is pointed out here and you can see there's, uh, it's, it's a major city right in the center of the jungle. You can see right there. And then you can see the population here. So it's a little bit uh, more obvious maybe on this map how that all happens. So the water pollution actually starts, uh, believe it or not, uh, in the Rwanda side. So there's actually this city right here, this city here, and then all of this right in here. Because the Congo River itself, if you look on this, you can kind of see it spins around here and then goes through here. And there's a major city. You can see there's just millions and millions of people living right here. So, so I wanted to talk directly to uh, the various people out there interested in neuroscience. And one of the really huge ideas uh, that I've been thinking about for quite some time is this eye of Africa. Oftentimes we think of Antarctica as the brain of Earth, but when you really look at it here, I mean, if you look, if you look at it, it's even more obvious that this looks like an eye, like an elephant or a rhino, and you got this huge, massive uh, brain, if you will, right? And even this other stuff here. So it's it's a huge thing. There's actually a missing eye. You can see part of the lake, but on the climate map, when I bring this back, you're gonna notice that there's almost another hidden eye right here. And that will take a little time to load. Sorry about this. Uh, what's going on? There you go. So <clears throat> this climate map <clears throat> actually varies. There's actually a pocket right in here. Uh, let me see if I can get that for you. So I'm really sorry, but I want to go through all the climates. You can see January. Here's February. You can see that actually the jungle is actually very much different in terms of rainfall than you might think. Uh, per month and actually there's a very important happening right in here and that's why this area is so vital is a lot of people don't know about it but this delta region gets huge amounts of rain even like there's almost no rain in the south part of the jungle and this that, that is this is zero rain that month so you can see an actually heavy rainfall now right on this western part and that's why this is so important to study is that there's just huge amounts of rain and then right in here in Cameroon as well and we're just starting to get to that now you can start to see some of this almost neurological look of Africa in September October and you can see it kind of changing back down south again in the winter and here is then again going over here and then I'll go back to January so you can see that southern portion and this down here is Tanzania and Mozambique and some other places and there's actually no rain here it's actually desert so uh, hopefully that rain map will help you think about that a little bit so in terms of the importance of Antarctica versus Africa uh, 
you know, it's not really about one or the other. Uh, Antarctica is actually larger than Af than, than Antarctica uh, in many respects. Uh, let's just look at that here so you can see. Uh, here's Antarctica, right? And then here is Africa. So definitely uh, it's a different thing entirely uh, in terms of what is happening. Uh, you basically have a whole different perspective. And in fact, while Antarctica looks more like just a brain, there's quite a lot of other things going on here. And oftentimes, uh, I ret refer this to it as the three main brains. You have a top, a northern, a middle, and then a southern. And then you also have Africa in terms of a massive concept to understand about the planetary astrophysics and spirituality of our planet. So definitely uh, it's different. You can notice that South America here is quite similar uh, to Antarctica, right? It basically has a very similar shape, a tail that actually is connected to Antarctica. And just like North America, you have that same thing. There is no such thing in Africa like that, right? And you also have a totally different jungle uh, and things. So in terms of the overall astrophysics of any planet around the universe, we can basically argue that there's going to be a North Pole, South Pole, and Equator type of concept in terms of the brain or how the planet thinks. Clearly, we have that on our planet. We have a Northern America, an Antarctica, and then some kind of central thing. Um, and then everything else on the planet of whatever planet that exoplanet that might be out there in the universe, there'll probably be something like Africa, right? Um, you'll maybe have uh, uh, even a question here where this is actually more of a center. So it almost is like the north one should have been connected to here and this one should have been connected to here. And actually this should have been so something else. So the placement of these objects may actually be very different depending on the planet and depending on the solar system and all these details. Um, however, it may be just easiest to think of it as, you know, north, south, and middle. Um, so uh, that is one thing to think about and then trying to group things uh, based on the hemispheres or other factors. Um, so uh, again, we're still thinking about water and life on this planet. And basically, we want to try to, uh, you know, work together here with everybody um, is immediately. So I'm probably gonna have to close off this conversation uh, and do some, uh, you know, studies here with everybody. But uh, what I would say is like, let's try uh, to look at this carefully. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to add two more things. The soil based map, I noticed that I didn't really um, draw any diagrams on that um, and actually it's very important um, you can see that there's been some kind of major change here um, to the soil grids website um, and then here's kind of the global soil map and you can see I'll try to zoom in here uh, so you can see Africa in detail in case you can't load this on your computer it takes a very long time unfortunately but you can see uh, some of the the soil uh, here uh, both in the southern tip of Africa as well um, so Everything is very important here. You can kind of see some of this floodplain here. Um, here is more of the kind of that hidden eye. You can see kind of the swamp uh, showing up. So actually there's quite a lot on this north side that I didn't even discuss uh, in terms of the river. So actually um, the north side of the river in terms of soil is very swampy here on the Congo side. Um, interestingly, and then on the satellite image, I actually noticed quite a very important uh, splits of there's like two or three rivers heading out here to the Great Lakes. You can't really see that. Um, so you can see that the Congo River kind of spins around here. But if you zoom in, this is some of the most important forest <clears throat> in the world because it's got these mountain ranges and there's kind of some swamp land. So basically different creatures can live, animals and wildlife 
and um, things. So you can see these rivers kind of head off over into these lakes. So a lot of animals may travel up and down the rivers. And like I mentioned before, if you're not familiar with monkeys, monkeys cannot swim actually. And so they are afraid to cross rivers. They don't even go above their knees in the water because they're afraid. So oftentimes there's many creatures that can never cross the rivers. So a lot of this river stuff is very important. If you zoom in, I'll even show you some more details and you can see how complex the rivers are. And there's basically a split here that goes right down this valley um, and into this very um, important region. And there's some even some small towns. You can see this is a massive town um, here. And some of these towns have um, you know half a million, a million people or more. So this is the USGS map. Um, and then really I wanted to get in, I really wanted to look at this because actually the major water problems are on the freshwater side and also in the United States, the Great Lakes. Um, they've actually backed up some blocks, some of the lakes so that um, the water has been very clean in Lake Michigan. Um, you can see to the bottom of the water, um, you know, 10 feet or more um, and it's clean, um, fairly clean, but there's still a major cleanup needed even in Chicago and the other Great Lakes. Um, so, but uh, that was done by blocking the river so it doesn't just empty right into the uh, lake. Uh, but uh, anyway, so there's just so much details here. I added a second map um, in case you need. Um, you can do this. It says rivers in Africa. So not only do I have hydrological basins here um, and major rivers. So it's major rivers and then smaller rivers. That's why it may look slightly different. So you can see all these little details. So this is actually um, very detailed um, on that. So you can see here also I added that uh, the small river. So this is just population. This had farmland in it as well. I'll zoom out just in case you don't have the ability to see everything. So it kind of gets really complex with all the rivers. You can see the small rivers here. I'll turn those off just for a second so you can see. So basically these are the major rivers and then now you can start to see some of the farmland as well as population. So these are the population centers in blue um, and you can see Kampala. Uh, so, and then I just wanted to have a brief discussion because really, um, you know, the, I really diagrammed a lot of this out here um, and I didn't wanna have to talk about it because it's not, I wanted to let people decide in Africa what they think of the discussion here, and it's really complex, um, all the details here, and I didn't wanna say one detail is more important or less important than the others, um, but my personal dream, I, I just wanna tell you one story. Um, I never went to the jungle before because I felt that it was not good for me to go into the jungle um, at all in uh, Brazil. Um, I definitely wanted to go, but I just decided not to because I felt that it I wasn't wise enough about many different aspects. So one thing that I did notice, I went to the carnival and um, it got completely, um, all of a sudden there was some kind of spiritual force um, that took over the crowd. I didn't go inside the carnival, but I was outside on the street. And all these people started running around like, um, it's hard to explain. It, it was like they were running in this wildlife um, spirit or something. And it was the first time in life um, there was all these Africans and um, they were just running so fast and all over the place. And it was just like, I wasn't in the jungle. But spiritually, I just had this sense that the animals loved moving around and doing tons of stuff. And it's very important for us to have this spiritual freedom for the animals to be able to move between these two legs. So one thing I really wanted to emphasize is the f speed at which these animals move um, around the jungle. It, it, there are some very slow creatures that really you know take their time, um, but it's really important to have a pathway that's very clean and open from the lakes through here. So there's so much people, like as you can see, there's just packed with population around these lakes. This is freshwater lakes. There are no lakes. There's basically these two lakes in here, but even those are starting to become populated. And so it's basically the rivers is all they got, but it's really nice to have a pathway 
through here. So I really try to emphasize in these diagrams, I think I showed here kind of, and I drew this wrong. Actually, I, I was looking more carefully at that back door of the jungle here. Actually, the humans and this city right in particular here, there's just these rivers that the animals really need to be able to go in between here. And there's actually a lot of the bigger wildlife, giraffes, um, elephants, they actually don't live directly in the jungle sometimes. They live in the in the uh, savanna here um, in the plains. And so they actually need a separate pathway into the jungle, which actually is through here, um, interestingly, right? And they have a special way. This lake right here actually becomes very important um, for kind of getting around. So I, I just wish I could explain that the feeling um, in Rio de Janeiro during Carnival of these people just really and and the interesting thing i was thinking about this many years later like 10 years or more later they were running towards the jungle i don't even think they realized it um if you know anything about the carnival um it's actually kind of in a weird part of the city it's actually a little bit poorer part of downtown rio and it was just like i don't know how to explain it but they, they were there was just something there like about um really um, working with the wildlife and the people. It was the first time in my life that I ever experienced so many people completely taken over spiritually by the wildlife. It was amazing. And I would say, you know, Rwanda, it, it's going to be even more extreme than Rio, Rio de Janeiro is very far from the jungle. Um, however, it has some characteristics of Kampala, for example, or West Africa. Um, however, it's very mountainous as well. So this Rwanda stuff is going to be extremely uh, different because it's right in the jungle. The biodiversity is all in here along these back cities and it's going to be extreme in terms of the wildlife and we really have to use that pressure of the crowd of the wildlife basically wanting to do things in their, in the wildlife's lands, right? So some of these pathways are so extreme that we absolutely cannot block anything along these river systems. Um, and we have to make sure the water is very, very clean um, and and all the details here. So there's a lot of details that I simply may have, um, you know, that we just need to expand on, especially um, if we zoomed in and we looked right around uh, Rwanda. And let me just do that uh, so you can see. So basically, the other question that I really did not discuss on the maps, you'll notice on Google Earth here, I showed Antarctica uh, being uh, a polar brain and then Africa, but you'll see there's this little sliver in here. Remember the swamp on the on the uh, is actually on the north side. So there's this little pathway right in here is one of the most important pathways because it's the only thing that connects here and actually working to try to connect this in here. We didn't discuss that at all. So as well as this ocean pathway through here, um, you know there are a totally different. There's thousands of types. There's not just 10 types of monkeys. There's thousands of types of monkeys, um, each one a different species uh, living on this island here. And basically, um, you know, there's just, it's really complex, the environment, as you can see. So these pathways through here, Kenya, as you can see, there's different kind of, there's the Serengeti down here, but actually it's quite similar. So actually the, some of the most important land is the complex land that actually is in, over in Kenya and through that pathway that we discussed, and I think you can kind of see here, this is a water pathway. So actually it's very important to understand that this is a different water basin through here heading up all the way to Ethiopia. So this little river right here, there's maybe, you know, um, 10 kilometers, which is quite far for the animals to travel, but they know about these ways. And this little 10 kilometers can make all the difference in the world, making it easier for the animals to travel between this region and that region. And actually, there's also a problem of some animals absolutely need to stay on this side or absolutely need to stay on this side, um, you know, invasive species and other things. So there's a lot of topics uh, to really think about. And I'm sorry if I'm rushing this. The reason I'm rushing this is because I want other people to have fun and look at this, not just me um, studying all the details here. So there's so many details um, that we probably should have looked at. And you can see there's just huge amounts of population along all the rivers. That means if you, I wouldn't even piss in the river in any any of these places. Um, you know, it's just a little bit of dirt. No one wants to, it would, you know, it could pollute hundreds, thousands of gallons 
just one person, right? And there's there's millions and millions, right? This city right here, this is a city of, you know, 10 million plus, I think it's, it's 17 million, a million plus here. You know, there's a lot of people, that means there's several million down in here. So basically these rivers right in here, I wanted to reemphasize, I almost don't even want to show this map, how important this is, but this, this lake um, and Lake uh, Etumba are very important because they're basically the deepest part of the jungle. And you can see a major city in here, major city here and there, and then a city of just people all lined along this river. Fortunately, this is a different river and it's not very populated, but these river systems, we have a very important water study here that we can do in this city, right? Basically sensing the water, trying to see what's going on with the environment in a very microscopic way. And these might be some of the best water researchers on the planet in terms of the jungle in this city right here. Um, and I have a detailed discussion about all the, the details. So, uh, and I just want to emphasize, there's kind of, you know, we're basically talking about the earth being alive, right? Uh, we have all these new concepts. Um, I didn't talk about the spiritual earrings here, but um, let me just point those out really quick. So there's a couple islands right here. I'm sorry, this is all really, uh, anyway, but we have to kind of use our creativity to imagine what's going on. Here's this slingshot, this jungle slingshot that I've been talking about um, and some other things. And you can see here on Antarctica, you have basically this tongue heading off of Africa here, uh, actually going over to uh, Brazil, right? And actually the Southern part of Brazil. And the wind system is very interesting. So even the microorganisms that travel out of the Amazon typically travel down through here first. So they don't actually trade, um, the, even the tiniest little bit of biology can change a forest. Um, you know, they could completely destroy the forest with um, a new type of uh, bug or something. So it's very important that the actually it has to travel through here. It has to travel down south first and up. And there's just so many important details. Sorry about this. Um, but you can see here, um, we basically have a very important area, Ethiopia and West Africa, as we've been discussing. And I'm sorry to do so much of this um, uh, like this, but uh, I'll zoom in so you can see some of the details here. Um, and there's just extremely important land right in here. This is actually uh, Liberia um, and uh, some very important uh, jungle. And I didn't even discuss this, but the water situation in there, in that delta, you can see all the population, huge amounts of population. I was really crying for Lagos, Nigeria. I saw a video of some extremely nice houses, but then there's also extreme poverty living right out on the river. They actually just... It's, it's really bad that they're, you know, the, the situation, they're dumping the sewage right into the water. And, you know, a hurricane can come in here and completely destroy these villages. And actually, right in here, you can see um, Douala and Cameroon um, and all these rivers. You know, this is probably extremely polluted area um, and, and basically right next to the jungle. So you basically can't get a valid passport into the jungle until you start to really think about the water here. If you're really thinking about the water here, um, you know, you also need to think about helping in Cameroon as well. Um, and then once we get that, there's even another uh, Libertyville here. Um, and from what I understand, um, uh, it's quite uh, wild in this region here. And there's actually this whole water plate, as you can see this water plate kind of falls in here and it actually separates the Congo and the Congo has a very specific river here through this point and you can see this is almost its own private jungle and actually this is similar what you see here um, this whole region right in here and here actually can be used similar to Kampala it's a ginormous there's just so many people here and so many people in Kampala that we really need to protect these areas and learn how to live in the jungle in these areas first before going directly into the jungle. And actually, why not just live on the beach? Why live deep in the jungle in someone else's land, in the wildlife's land, when you can basically live here with the same climate and try to learn to work with the animals as well as in Kampala. So, and you can see there's uh, Zanzibar here has a little sliver of the jungle as well and the coastal towns. So there's even options right in here that you can work with. Um, so. Uh, anyway, but going back to the maps, there's a lot that we did not discuss in West Africa. All these rivers 
Every single river has its own wildlife. Remember, it's the same as the jungle all along here. So actually you can see tiny islands, everything hugely populated. And we really have to learn our lessons here before we start to just say, oh, we're gonna live in the jungle and try to clean up the water. Let's clean up the water right on the beach and some other areas like that. And even down in here, you can see uh, there's another city I really wanted to point out, a Portuguese speaking city uh, right here at La Onda in Angola. And you can see there's almost a separate plate here just for that. And there's quite a lot of population right in here and also pulling into the back door of the jungle. So a lot of this discussion actually was in here. If you look at my um, maps, I'm sorry I'm getting so detailed with everything. Um, sorry about this. Uh, but I'll go back to this map really quickly. So again, because there's so much population in here, we really, this is a major cleanup because it's the back door as well as in here. But really, we need to focus the conversation and looking at all the details here. I'm sorry, I'm going to look at those maps just in case people don't have access. I'll try to zoom in here so you can see the rivers in detail. It might take a moment to load, but it's probably worth it um, to see. So hopefully these details can show here. Let me even add, uh, it has the details. So um, for some reason, it doesn't show up very well, but there's just so many details here. It's gonna probably make people really, um, important thing is try to study it carefully and have fun and even with the wildlife around. So uh, again, uh, please try to um, uh, take a look at all these uh, very important details. Um, and again, um, you know, I had to actually look at some of the satellite map to see what was happening in detail in here because not all these rivers, some of them are so viney and you can't even see them um, on the satellite. So it does help to look at this, but actually the satellite imagery is really different. I loved it um, because it shows some of the mountain ranges back in here. And this actually does not show up in the Brazilian jungle. So the interesting thing is it, it does show up over in Colombia. Anyway, we're going to talk about that hopefully soon. So anyway, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed all this study. I didn't really um, diagram some of these because I thought some people would like to do some of their own work and I kept this one blank as well. And I'll try to add the two, two soil maps as well and the importance of working with people here. You can always make friends with people from all over the world here. Um, and so this is the soil grid here. Um, and it actually changed quite a bit. I'm actually starting to like this one as well. Um, but you can just see all the complexity here. So we really need to think, um, you know, there's gonna be specific rivers uh, that are based on certain types of soil that we really need to diagram out carefully. Um, and you can see, um, anyway, there's just so much uh, to basically um, study here. I'm gonna try to zoom in here. Um, and I try to add, <coughs> sorry about this. Uh, yeah, so the crop maps are also added on this and I'll try to add this so you can see um, the images. Thank you so much for your help with this. There are so many animals that will absolutely love you for helping out with this. I have noticed squirrels are even walking down the street with me nowadays for many, many blocks. And I even come back an hour later and the same squirrel is still wanting to talk to me. So I'm very happy with my work on the wildlife and I really hope you two will have some really fun time thank you so much uh, so I just wanted to add this really quick because I uh, dimmed down the soil map here so you can kind of see some of the rivers just in case um, you don't have it, it's a little bit stressful to do this on your computer so um, here you can see West Africa as well um, and some of the details let me even do this a little bit um, maybe this will help a little bit I don't know I tried to do it the best I could so um, but you can see um, some of the rivers here and through this whole region. And actually the south part, very important. And actually you see the water basin lines here um, and some of the soil areas. So super helpful. And actually there's gonna be a lot of farming down here in Southern uh, Mozambique and this other area. So this is important to really see as well. Um, and then Madagascar, uh, so. Yeah, but just the complexity here is super important. And again, you can see how this all kind of follows through here and I'll go even up to uh, this area. So actually it's interesting, this actually kind of bypasses Digibati. So I think I made a discussion uh, question here to actually a very specific point right in here um, with the water as well. So 
Um, anyway, thank you so much. I'm sorry, one other thing. Um, I just wanted to emphasize this is really the start of the Congo River, and I wanted to have a very detailed uh, discussion here just so people can see the maps. You can see the population here on either side of the basin. So actually, right in here, this city here, I mean, there's just so many important areas. But actually, <coughs> like I said, uh, you know, if, if you even pee once in the river here, it can just do hundreds, thousands of gallons of water can be not so great at all and you can see right in here but actually um and I, and I almost didn't even want to discuss this but this whole river system right in here has been populated along here and this is actually very deep in the jungle you can see some details here and this and the importance of this city here uh in terms of water study um is very important there's actually quite a large city right there anyway um many millions of people living all over here so um Anyway, uh, and you can see just huge amounts of population as well um, over here. Um, but we have to work together and we have to try to understand. And here's the last detailed map um, that you can see um, as well. Anyway, I'll really be praying for you. I'll be thinking about the earth. I'm going to try to walk around and do some other things um, as much as possible. Um, every time I work on one of these studies, I try to walk for hours and <laughs> look at the ground, look at the sky, think about the earth and pray for everyone, especially the wildlife as well, and try to work together on this in a peaceful way. Thank you so much.